So someone was asking how to do a uh, quick time event, so I made a little thing so it plays through and if you don't um, do the stuff in time then it will play one animation with the I'm saying the hero block is this guy um, it just bounces off but if we uh, press X until it goes green then the good guy wins yay so I've got two uh, timelines and if I turn this timeline off like that uh, then you can see the uh, success timeline so this timeline just has the losing part starting from from this point so they're at the, they're the same both timelines are the same at this point um, and then the losing one has a different animation so the losing one uh, the the um, clay coloured one bounces off um, so now we want to kind of turn this one off and turn this one on um, if we failed and if we haven't failed we'll leave this one off and leave this one on so now let's uh, stick it all in a microchip and because we want the default state to be success we'll turn the failure timeline off and uh, so well some logic okay so that, let's make the the actual QuickTime UI stuff first, because that will be easiest. Uh, so we'll have this in a chip, so we can turn the whole thing on and off. Um, this will be the X, X button, so angle bracket, X, angle bracket. Um, and we'll make it white without a background or anything. And just whammy it up and we want uh, another thing for the like meter thing so if we go in here and just go done it'll be empty but it'll still show the text box so let's make it not rounded and we don't need a background we'll just have the border and we don't want it to auto fit we want to be able to change the size how we want make it that and then turn off shadow and play I often play and pause time so that the other text will be on the screen so let's just put that there um, that will be the outline so you can see how far up you got to go uh, we also want to make sure this is uh, bottom aligned so that we can just move the top because we want the bar to kind of go up like that so let's just put that there and make a copy and now we can turn off the border and turn on the fill and use a keyframe to record that as the full size and then make it really short like that so when the keyframe is powered it's full the bar looks full let's move those over there but uh, the cool thing with the keyframe is oh yeah the cool thing with the keyframe is you can power it to different degrees and it will um, restore that state as in making it really tall uh, to that degree so if I put it to 50% then it's only making it 50% of that tool instead of fully on or off so you can kind of animate this and do whatever you like with it so now we're going to have a, a way of affecting that so let's put that there uh, controller sensor in remote controllable mode and we'll use the X button again first I'll explain this part of the timer so for this we're going to use a timer because it will let us do some cool stuff um, to demonstrate I'll add a value slider so if you put it into speed mode then the the signal being sent into the play is the speed that time will move so if you play time it's not moving at all because we're at zero 
we go 0.1 now for every second of real time that passes 0.1 second will pass in here and you can put it to minus numbers and it will it will play backwards so uh, what, what I want to do is get a calculator and we'll put X into the calculator and uh, it's just adding by default it's adding zero so we'll just take that and put that into there so now for play time and press X you can see as I'm holding X it's kind of going up but really we want to each time you press it it goes up a certain amount so let's put it through a signal manipulator in pulse mode which means it'll turn on and turn off which means it'll send a 1 and then a 0 so let's just try putting that straight in there so uh, because it's sending it for such a short amount of time it's not really doing much uh, we want this to be a larger value so let's put that into the uh, calculator and uh, we can use the wire blend modes which is this symbol here if you hold L1 it tells you what the wire blend mode is and while holding L1 you can press X to cycle through them so if you put it into modulate mode then the number coming in will be multiplied by that the base number here so if it was 0.4 it would be 1 times 0.4 or it would be 1 times 2.25 so we can um, and that's the value that it will use for this gadget so let's just make that that larger so now when this pulses it will add 5.78 let's put plug that back in there so you can see it increasing at a much bigger rate like that what we're using this timer for is the timer output which is the percentage through that the current time is uh, relative to the target time so if you made that two seconds and put that at 0.5 that's a quarter of two seconds so it'll send out a quarter signal or 25 percent so now that will carry through to this so if we press it a load of times then it's actually increasing the uh, the bar that we've got there um, but we want it to kind of slowly slip down if we don't press X for a while so we'll add it to a negative number so now um, it will slip down at a rate of 0.16 but then when you're pressing X then it will increase it a load so now it's like slowly falling down but then if you keep pressing it then it will go up so if we make that go down a little faster then it's harder to to get back up there but then we can make that shorter to make it a bit easier again like that and then uh, reset that to zero so we start zero and then when we get to this point we'll trigger some other state that uh, we've actually succeeded so we'll have a state here that will be if we're, we've succeeded or not so um, it will start off with a which means we uh, have failed and then when we complete the timer we'll put it into B and check which changes it to the B um, channel and then A won't be sending a signal anymore and B will be sending a signal so A will be fail and B will be success so then B we want to just power that fully and not worry about what the timer is doing so now uh, if we try that then we, when we get to the top it's like locked in and we don't have to keep on pressing X um, and we can uh, do something else such as make this glow and have like a different color or something so that the uh, player is clear that it's locked in then we hook that up in here so now when we're locked in it goes green um, maybe we turn these off this off as well bing and you can do whatever else uh, you want to do there so now um, this will be changing uh, our actual timeline so um, when we're in failure mode then we turn off success and we turn on the failure animation we want it to happen 
um, at this point here. We want it to actually change to the failure animation. Uh, we'll have a node that if we fail, if we still haven't succeeded rather, then it will power this uh, keyframe. But that node will only be checked, will only be turned on at a certain time, like this. This timeline in here. And make it shorter. So um, I'd like this to happen. Uh, let's just turn this off. I'd like this to happen when they're about to meet, like around there. So that you have to keep on tapping X until they get to, get to each other here. So that will be the end of it. So let's make sure that's on there. And then I want to start here. So let's put that there. And in here, we will have a keyframe that um, that turns on a special mode, quick time event mode. And we'll just have all that stuff in here because uh, you might reuse reuse the same quick time effects. So let's put all this in a chip and just power that. And then with this keyframe, we're just going to turn that on. Um, and while it's turned on, we'll have a keyframe that um, lowers the playback speed. So. When you're actually animating, you don't have to worry about the quick time events. You can just um, animate as normal, and then in for the actual quick, quick time logic, we can just slow down the whole thing um, and make sure that's on. And we want it to kind of ramp up and then slowly ramp down so that it, it's not suddenly jarring too much. Uh, make sure this keyframe is on as well. Right. So now when we play time. So it slows down at that point. So then this stuff will happen in here. Um, so I'll just put that whole chip in here um, and leave that on. Let's see if that works. That does the winning one. And then if you don't complete the thing, then it'll do the all farts one. Um, Cool, so that's how you can do a quick time event. I'd like to thank Jack Power, VGA Port Authority, MDKD99, and all of my other supporters for making this tutorial possible. Thanks for watching. If you'd like me to continue making these tutorials and helping creators across the internet, you can find out how to support me in the link in the description. Thanks for your consideration, and I'll see you in the next one.